So I'd like to welcome you all to the explanation behind Open Sesame. So first of all, this is not the version I used in class. This is actually the older version which I sent the email about. This is the interactive Ising uh, 3.0. Uh, this is from earlier on this year and, and doesn't have this crashing uh, issue when you change the name of thing. So for example, if I change the name here to cat experiment, you see it quite happily changes it. So uh, this will be much better for your experiments. It, it, it looks a little bit different. Um, some of the icons will look different, but again, if you just put your mouse over it, it'll tell you what these are. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite the instructions. So to do that, we just have to double click on the icon and on the text, and just call it instructions. Uh, here you are going to see a series of cat photos. Your, ta your task is to decide if the cat is male or female. For male, press Z. For female, press M. Okay, something very, very simple like this. Um, we're then going to add in a loop. And we're going to call this, not surprisingly, loop. Uh, we're going to repeat the loop 40 times, 20 uh, times for male, 20 times for female. Um, we can add a variable name here. We're going to call it f name, and we'll add another variable called cr. Uh, inside the loop, we're going to run a sequence. So we just grab another sequence. We put that set that inside the loop. And this is going to be called our experiment sequence. So we're going to start off with a fixation dot. So in this older version, along with having a sketch pad do your fixation, you can actually use a fixation dot down here. Um, so we're just going to call that fixation dot. If I double tap it, I can edit it. So right now this is set to appear for a thousand milliseconds or one second. Um, we want that to set for 500. Um, we then want it to have a, uh, a stimulus screen. So we're gonna call it stimulus. We want that stimulus not to be up for key press, but to be up for zero milliseconds. What that means is instantaneously as it goes up, it will then go on to the next sequence, which in this case is going to be a keyboard response. Response. Um, so the correct response can be um, either a C or a Z, and we're going to allow those to uh, uh, I mean Z and the M. Um, right now, just set the correct response to Z. I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, so once we have the correct response, we're going to put a data logger just to save the results to the file. If we go back to our stimulus, we want to put in an image now. So what we're going to do is put a cat image. So here we're going to select a, a drawer element we're going to put that in the center of the screen, and we're going to add some fire images. So this is where your cat faces come into useful. So I've got 20 male cats, 20 female cats, uh, and I'm just going to choose a female cat to begin with. And select. So you see now I have my cat face. Oh. Um, so it's going to appear in the center of the screen. So what will happen right now is my experiment will repeat um, and show a fixation, 
then the stimulus, the stimulus disappears instantaneously, waits for a keyboard response, and finally logs the result. Now at the moment, it's always going to show the same sequence and the same count. What we want it to do is instead is to show different file names up here. So here I've got this file name And so the correct response for female cat will be M. And I can populate my list down here with my male and female cats. Um, what I need to do now is change my response. So instead of it being the response here, the correct response is actually contained within that loop, within that CR variable. So instead of having it Z, what we're going to do, remember, we're going to put variables inside square brackets and this to be CR. What that will then do is it'll look up for that appropriate trial what is the correct response, whether it's Z or M. The other thing we have to also do is change the cat face. So right now the cat face is always going to be the same cat. We don't want that, we want the cat to change on each trial. So what I'm going to do here is open up the file. As you can see right now, it's going to show file fo1.bmp. We don't want that, so we're going to take that out. And I'm just going to, in square brackets, again, because it's a variable, I'm going to put my fname variable. What that will mean is on each trial or each run through the loop, it will go and look up what's the appropriate file name for this particular trial. So you see right now, this is zero. So at the moment, this experiment is going to run in sequence um, because I'm not randomizing. And I can I should just change that here into, into a sequential. And so if I run this in a window, I'm going to get two trials and then it's going to crash because I've only got two file names. But you'll see the whole experiment. So here, if I press any key, here's my cat. There we go. So it's, it's it's coming up as an error here because it doesn't have cat face DMP. There we go. But that's how the experiment would run. If I now want to also put in a response um, to tell me if I get it wrong. I can put in a sound file. So I can take the sampler here, put this over here, and point it towards a new, in here I have a sound cat meow. Thank you very much. So I'm going to put this in my selector, select this as my cat. And so what will happen here is it's going to play full volume uh, with the regular pitch. Uh, it'll pay for duration sound. What that means is it'll only pay for it'll play for the entire sound clip. Now what I want to do is I want to have that sound play whenever it gets uh, a wrong response from the experimenter. So as you see here in my experiment list, right now it's always going to play um, every single time. I want that to change, and I want it to change based on how my subject responded. So what you can do is click up here, and this is what we call the variable inspector. On the right hand side of the page, this brings up this variable inspector which records all the things in your response file. So you see here what they're doing, what keyboard they pressed. Um, up the top here, it will actually tell us whether they get a correct response. So this is a variable which is very useful because it tells us whether they got the trial right or wrong. So what we want to do is have the cat meow whenever it gets a, uh, a variable when the correct response variable is zero. So what I can do here is instead of having it play always, I can replace this and say, again, because this is a variable, I want to have square brackets. And I can say correct 
response equals zero. That means that if I get the trial wrong, then it will play a cat meow. This is very useful for sort of reinforcing good practices amongst your participants, making sure they actually learn to do the experiment correctly, giving them feedback. So, right now, all, all my cats are female, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what happens now when I press a wrong response. So here is my experiment. I run it. I'm waiting for my cat. So again, it's Z for male, M for female. This is a female cat, but I'm going to respond that it's male, and I should get a meow. As you can see, this is a female cat, so if I respond that this is a female cat, I will press M, I will not get a meow. And right now, because I have no other images, um, I, the experiment's going to stop. But if my experiment had a full list of names down here, then this would run until the very end. So with this, you should be now be able to complete your assignment. Um, please make sure you look at the experiments uh, tutorials which are on the Open Sesame website, and there's also a number of video uh, tutorials which show you how to use Open Sesame.